Hey everybody, Pat Mallon here. Shopify is the platform for which we are going to use to make our e-commerce store. We're going to start selling products and advertising and sending our ads to Shopify. But um, before we get going, I just want you to have a better understanding of why we choose Shopify. Uh, Shopify is, is one of many choices out there. There's WooCommerce, Magento, and other CMSs. But uh, what happens is that they can be very, very tedious and, and uh, have a high learning curve at the beginning. And if you want to get going and start e-commerce right away, uh, I highly recommend Shopify. Uh, there is some upfront costs, but uh, they are well worth the cost. Um, and we will get into some of the prices in a little bit down the road, but in the long run, they all even out. For about $29 a month, you could have a store running right away on Shopify. Whereas, although Word, having WordPress, let's say, for example, is free, WordPress is, is a, a free installation, but there's a hidden cost that you have to take into account. You have to get an SSL certificate. You have to get uh, web hosting. Um, there's third-party apps that are involved for uh, processing credit cards and whatnot. All that stuff is included with your Shopify membership reoccurring charge and the benefit of having it right out of the box is pretty much priceless. It's a well-supported system and that is why we are going to be using it in this lesson. So now you know why we're going to be using Shopify uh, and not only am I going to show you how to set up your Shopify store from beginning to end, I'm also going to show you how to choose a niche find the products you want to sell on your store, find a great trigger item that's going to get people in the door, and also use social media, um, specifically Facebook, to drive traffic that's going to make you lots of money and make your money fast. All right, let's move on. Before we actually dive into the store, let's do one quick exercise. There's two routes that you can go. There's niche stores and flex stores. Now, a niche store is probably uh, self-explanatory. It, it's a store that sells products of all one variety, uh, one market, say a fishing supply store or a gymnastics store or one that sells to nurses or grandparents or what we will end up choosing for our example is golf. Um, now a flex store is a little bit different. It's uh, like your, imagine, Walmart or an Amazon online. It has tons of different products of all different types of varieties. For our intents and purposes, we're going to start out with, with a, a niche store and I'm going to tell you why I think that you as a beginner should probably do the same. Um, first of all, when you're first starting out, a niche store will help you own your, hone your focus on to one set of products, especially if you know the, the niche that you're getting into. You can concentrate on uh, the ads, the products, everything about it, the, the, the ad copy, and you will have a better sense of how to sell and what to sell. And that's important, especially when you're first getting started. One advantage that I think makes a niche store far superior to a flex store is that when a customer comes in to a niche store, they are more likely to buy additional products through an upsell. And I'll show you a Shopify app that that I use all the time that makes great upsells. You will get a person in the door to buy, you know, a quote unquote trinket, and then you say, hey, while well, you have your wallet out, hey, why don't you why don't you try this product, which is you know in the twenty dollar range and you'd be surprised how many times they will buy that. But if you're going with a flex store and you know you get somebody in the door to buy, say, like a fishing gizmo, um, and you try to upsell them with something else like uh, sunglasses, maybe it doesn't jive. Maybe you know they don't see the connection. Ah, I don't need a pair of sunglasses. 
but if they're in a fishing store and they get another fishing product for an upsell, then it's a logical grouping. And like I said before, a niche store also incites passion. And you're going to be targeting people that want these products and you know they want these products because you'll see the, the audience insights for that. These products will tap into that passion they have for that hobby or that way of life that they have and they're going to be more likely to buy your product. And that is a powerful tool that you want to use. So a little bit of homework before we actually start the store. Think about a niche you want to sell in. So this can either be something that you're an expert in. It doesn't have to be. But it's good to have somewhat, some knowledge of what you're selling and who you're selling it to. And if you are completely in the dark and have no idea what to pick, we will go into a little bit on how to find a niche and, um, and get you going that way if, if uh, you can't think of one on your own. And also think of brand you want to think of is that you don't want to look generic when we're making your store and I'm going to show you how to make a pretty decent store that's going to uh, sell products and make people feel pretty comfortable about buying from you if you are let's say selling in the golf niche you don't want to be my cool golf store so think of a, a clever way of, of branding yourself and that you can sell it to Facebook targeted audiences all right, we'll see you in the next video. All right, now we're ready to dive right in and get our Shopify store all set up. Now, I'm gonna include a link right here. This is an affiliate link, but it will provide you with some extra time on your free trial and provide you with uh, some discounts on the back end. So if you use that, this will help you out in the long run. So follow that link. I'll also include it in the uh, handout that's attached to this course. But once you once you click that and you're here at Shopify.com, it's pretty simple. All you have to do is enter your email address. I'm going to pick a password. And then you pick your store name. Now, like I said in a previous video, I'm going to choose a golf niche. Now, this right here is not that important, This your store name. You cannot change it, but I'm going to show you why it's not that important in a few minutes or, or in a video down the road. This will end up becoming the subdomain before myshopify.com. So if I picked say golf king it would be golf king dot my shopify dot com that's kind of an ugly url that we don't want to use for advertising we will end up getting our own domain we'll get a domain name and we'll attach it to the shopify store so you have a nice clean url but so right now if you just pick anything that works There we go, Golf Kings. Here we go. Now it's loading. Sure, I'll save that. And just like that, I will fill this out. I'll pause the video and come back after this is filled out. All right, I filled out that section. Now I'm on the next screen. Uh, you could really, th this is just for their own benefit. You could say, I'm selling, just not online. Uh, I haven't sold any products yet. That might be true in your case. So select that. And they don't care if you're just getting started or you've sold that many. Uh, they just, I think this is more for just their in internal, internal use. And no, you are not setting up a store for a client. Or maybe you are. But in my case, and probably most of yours, you're not. So enter your brand new back end. <clears throat> Trial just started. Select a plan. Now this is just going to basically get you off on the right foot. Um, you don't have to do this right away, but probably best just to get it out of the way. Um, when you're first starting out, just go with uh, the $29 a month plan. 
there are some nice benefits for having the $79 a month. Um, and once you start selling a lot, you're going to start seeing this being very beneficial. Just that 0.3% can save you the $50 a month that you'll be making um, off of all the savings on the credit card rate. But you also get um, better shipping label discounts if you're selling products that you have in stock. But we're going to be drop shipping, so the shipping label stuff doesn't really apply. The other thing is that the uh, Shopify plan and the advanced Shopify plan have pretty pretty good professional reports. You can opt for those, and during the free trial, they'll let you play around with all the toys in those in those plans. Really, all you need is this. Many of my stores are still on the basic Shopify. I have not found a need to go over here. So I'm just going to choose this. So I picked the plan, plan for the store and I'll fill out the credit card information off camera and pick the uh, billing cycle. I mean that's it for this video. Uh, the next step we will be looking at is setting up your theme and the whole look of the site. Okay now that we have all the logistics out of the way let's go down to online store and themes and we are going to find a theme to get our store looking nice. Uh, hit the visit theme store and you'll you'll be presented a few expensive themes right off the bat. I have found no advantage in having any of these expensive themes. I have I have purchased them in the past, but Shopify actually provides you some pretty nice free ones and I really don't see a need to, to spend more especially when you're trying out new products and new niches and stuff like that just uh, just grab one of these free themes and get just get going uh, don't you don't need to add any extra costs at, at the start of this so um, I, I like this Brooklyn theme got a very nice look and it's very versatile for almost anything that you're selling. All you need to do is hit install theme. I am going to publish this as my store's theme. I want this to take over the front of the store and become my main theme. And seeing that no one's here right now uh, doesn't really matter. You may not want to do this in the middle of your store being open, but for us it's good. Uh, go to your theme manager. Now you can either click here or go up and customize theme. Now your store will have a big picture up front. They call it the hero banner and then down below they'll have some products that will be presented to you. Right now it's just some placeholders because you don't have any products yet. Uh, where we can start is by going to a site called freepick.com or there is What's the other one called? Freepick.com and uh, it'll come to me. If you type in golf, it looks like they it looks like they have a pretty good oh Pixabay. That's the one that I was thinking of. Pixabay. And we'll type in golf, see what they have. All right. Well, it looks like the other the other one might have some better logos to work with. But I like I like a lot of these uh, pictures that that might be used for the the front page banner. That's actually pretty good looking. Although there's a brand name in there we may not want. Um, all right. Well, here's where things start getting subjective, and you just need to to really. 
All right, this is a pretty nice logo. A guy swinging a club, swoosh in. We could add our tag, our uh, brand name down there, and whatever we decide for a tagline. Um, I dig it. it. It'll work, and it'll look good in Facebook. And um, I think uh, that you know, without pressing too much further, this is the way to go. So click the green button. Okay, free download. Thank you. Now for a big picture, that's pretty cool. That looks nice. Want just something that conveys golf and makes people feel really good about coming into your store. Probably doesn't show enough. Mm. Well, let's all right. Let's go with this one. I like it. We'll go with a the large size. Download that. Six, nine. Okay, so now we have two images to work with. All right, so I'm in my downloads. I'm going to quickly open up this in Adobe Illustrator. There are plenty of workarounds that you can use. Uh, you don't necessarily need to be a perfectionist about it. I am sometimes, which is not always a good thing. We're going to call our store Golf Kings. Let me get rid of the attribution down there. Can I? Maybe I can't. I'm not quite proficient in Adobe Illustrator, so forgive me. In fact, you know what? I am much more comfortable with. Photoshop, so all I want is this guy looking at his shot. Okay, I want to save this as an EPS. Close this, open my EPS in Photoshop. There we go. And you know, um, I highly recommend learning Photoshop. It does make your job a lot easier, but if it's something that you're just not fit for, then you could actually hire somebody on Fiverr or Source Market that can make a logo for you very very easily and save you some time. Um, I just happen to know my way around this program pretty well and it, frankly it helps. It helps a lot. Uh, so I suggest that everybody gets in internet marketing since, since uh, you need to do a lot with graphics and stuff. Everybody should really get their feet wet with these programs. Um, Golf Kings, all right, should we fill that out? All right, okay, how's that? You know, it's not Nike, it's not Adidas, but it's not that bad. It's not bad for what, five minutes worth of work? So we will save this as our logo. We want to save it as a ping. We want that transparency that will be on our store. So now we have our logo. Let's go to the header. Use a custom logo. Let's choose the file. Did I put it on the desktop? Yes. Okay. There we go. Oh, 
home page hero slideshow <clears throat> now let's uh, put a nice image in there the one that we got before nope. nice and let's change that to light so it shows up better. Just change it to golf kings. You leave this as shop now because you are in an e commerce store, you want to shop you know obviously um, you want people to start shopping so you just want to go through all these things and I apologize sometimes I just work on a whim and um, pick and choose the things I want to go at we have our logo and it actually looks pretty good it pops pretty nice off the, the green on the, the background and I kind of like the flash of these this guy's purple shoes you, you want to work with your ad copy and let's see if we have uh, Golf Kings, uh, somebody can come up with something for you. Nobody beats the Golf Kings. I don't know. You want to, you're going to want to play with that. For the sake of time, let's move on. Uh, that is the slider up there. Now all this stuff down here you could actually turn off turn the collections off. You're not going to have many products at the beginning so you really don't need the collections and if you do have featured products you will have you will have at least two to start but you're likely only going to want to show one at, at the beginning at least one on the store because one of them is going to be your free plus shipping item and that you may or may not want that present on the front page, but we could talk about that uh, in a further vi in a future video. But this will get, all right, we get it. Uh, this will get populated when you start adding products. As far as the colors are concerned, I mean, the colors are pretty good, the white and black, that's that's all based on the, the theme. So, I mean, you're all set there, but if you needed to go in there, you could, change all these let's see maybe uh, maybe we want to change that to, to green green green's a good color for, for buttons it means go so um, if you want to inspire people to click on your buttons there's tons of uh, mar marketing studies that are that are done that show that green is a good button to have and green just happens to go along with golf so we'll keep it and you know, I, I don't want to harp too much on this. Um, it looks good. Go in here, add your your uh, Facebook accounts uh, for this site, Twitter, Pinterest, Instagram, and so on. As as you create them, and I highly recommend that you create them. Follow this checklist down here, and and make make the site look like a pretty decent site. And there you have it. We'll go on. We'll move on, and we'll uh, start looking at the meat and potatoes of the store. Okay, in this video, we are going to set up our checkout settings. Customer accounts. Choose if you want to prompt your customer to create an account when they check out. You can make that optional. There are pros and cons with that, but giving people the choice is always you know, the, be the best method for me. Uh, I wouldn't completely disable it, and I wouldn't require it, because especially don't require it, because that will probably turn a lot of people away. Uh, form options require last name, require first and last. That I mean, that's up to you. I like first and last name. It's more secure. If people are entering credit card information. You want first and last name. You could put the company name optional required if if uh, you want that in your contact form. Uh, same with address line two or your phone number. Again, all that stuff is fine to have optional. I wouldn't require it because a lot of people don't have a second address line. Maybe some people don't have a phone number or a company. 
so keeping it optional is fine. While the customer is checking out, use the shipping address as the billing default. Yes, you want to do that. Now this is probably the most important toggle that you want to address. Collecting consent to send promotional emails to customers from your store. By default, you want them to agree. And that's important when you're building an email list because later down the road, you want these people to opt in to your email list. And we're gonna hook up MailChimp to the Shopify store and you want these customers to receive your promotions. So later on when you add a new product, you can say, hey, we have this, this new thing in our store, we wanna check it out. Well, if customers do, do not agree by default, then they're not gonna go and check it and say, oh yeah, I want emails. So it's not de a deceptive practice, but it is you are strong arming them into consuming more of your product. So I highly suggest you use customer agrees to receive promotional emails by default. Do not automatically fulfill an order online. We are drop shipping, so a lot of it is in, it, is in our court. We have to go to our fulfiller and purchase the product, and only when they ship it out to the customer are we gonna want to mark these products as fulfilled. So do not fulfill them. You can choose this if you'd like. Now, refund policy, privacy, and terms of service. Th these are all important and all should be present on your checkout page. The nice thing about Shopify is that they have cut and paste forms already there for you and they will automatically fill in the information that you have provided up to this point. So it makes it wicked easy. Hit save. Now you can, I'm not gonna show this in a video, but you can take these three documents and go over to pages and create separate pages. So they are visible on your front page or like put them in your your footer menu some people do like to see those things before making a purchase by default Shopify just keeps them in the checkout area that is it for checkout and we will touch on shipping next okay in this video we are going to set up our checkout settings Customer accounts. Choose if you want to prompt your customer to create an account when they check out. You can make that optional. There are pros and cons with that, but giving people the choice is always, you know, the be the best method for me. I wouldn't completely disable it, and I wouldn't require it because, especially, don't require it because that'll probably turn a lot of people away. Uh, form options require last name, require first and last. That I mean, that's up to you. I like first and last name it's more secure people are entering credit card information you want first and last name you could put the company name optional required if if uh, you want that in your contact form uh, same with address line 2 or your phone number again all that stuff is fine to have optional I wouldn't require it because a lot of people don't have a second address line maybe some people don't have a phone number or a company so keeping it optional is fine while the customer is checking out, use the shipping address as the billing default. Yes, you want to do that. Now this is probably the most important toggle that you want to address. Collecting consent to send promotional emails to customers from your store. By default, you want them to agree. And that's important when you're building an email list because later down the road, you want these people to opt in to your email list. and we're going to hook up MailChimp to the Shopify store and you want these customers to receive your promotions. So later on when you add a new product, you can say, hey, we have this, this new thing in our store, we want to check it out. Well, if customers do, do not agree by default, then 
they're not going to go and check it and say, oh, yeah, I want emails. So it's not de a deceptive practice, but it is you are strong arming them into consuming more of your product. So I highly suggest you use customer agrees to receive promotional emails by default. Do not automatically fulfill an order online. We are drop shipping, so a lot of it is in, it, is in our court. We have to go to our fulfiller and purchase the product and only when they ship it out to the customer are we going to want to mark these products as fulfilled. So do not fulfill them. You can choose this if you'd like. Now refund policy, privacy, and terms of service. Th these are all important and all should be present on your checkout page. The nice thing about Shopify is that they have cut and paste forms already there for you and they will automatically fill in the information that you have provided up to this point. So it makes it wicked easy. Hit save. Now you can, I'm not going to show this in a video, but you can take these three documents and go over to pages and create separate pages so they are visible on your front page or like put them in your, your footer menu. Some people do like to see those things before making a purchase. By default, Shopify just keeps them in the checkout area. That is it for checkout, and we will touch on shipping next. Okay, we're going to talk about some of the apps that you'll need for your store. Go down here, bottom left, hit apps, then hit the big blue button in your top right. This will bring you to the app store. First one that is pretty important is MailChimp, and we briefly touched on that in a previous video. This is a free app. It's imperative that you get it. As your store succeeds, you will be collecting lots of emails from your customers, even people that don't buy anything. If they start a checkout, their email will get entered onto your email list, and they could be a potential customer in the future. So make sure that you get that. The second one that we're going to look at is Boost Sales. This one is a paid app, however, for this $29, you'll soon see how well worth it is. You get a 15-day free, uh, 15 free trial, so there is really no risk on the 15th day. You could cancel and you won't be charged a dime for it if it's not working out for you. But if you have some pretty good traffic going uh, and you have uh, an upsell, which I'm going to show you, uh, once we get some products rolling, um, this becomes a pretty important tool. You want to get people in to your store with a an alluring, cheap item, and then you want to upsell them to something a bit more expensive. This is a great app for doing that. Just hit Get, Install App, and right now you're only going to need the $29 a month plan. And when you do have products in here, this will be pretty easy to set up. You'll want to choose Upsell. You'll select a product from your catalog and then select a product to upsell a customer to. And then you'll get choices and so on. And it's pretty self-explanatory. So that's that. Let me go back. This... The next one that we want to talk about is abandon, Abandonment Cart Protector. This is only $8 a month, 21 day free trial, and this is a great app because, now as we've talked about, if a person starts a checkout but does not complete it, 
you want to ping them and remind them gently and say, hey, you forgot to finish your payment. Is something wrong? Uh, we are holding your cart for you. Why don't you come back and finish your checkout? And this app has some templates that will phrase all that for you. Uh, you could certainly certainly uh, change the wording and convince your customers in other ways and of course this always takes testing any good internet marketer will test out their phrasing and and their uh, ad copy or their email copy in order to get the customer back into the store but they have some great templates here for you okay we have those two in our store as we said in a previous video, better shipping will take care of a lot of the problems that you'll encounter trying to establish different shipping prices for different weights. This app will show you all of the products that you have in your store and then you could set one price and no matter how many quantity they have, they'll just times that quantity by the price you set. And you could also give uh, mild discounts to customers who buy in bulk. So if, uh, the first one could be eight ninety five, the second one could be six dollars, and that will entice people to buy more because they're getting a discount, a perceived discount. So uh, this is great for that, and it's very easy, and also works with with uh, all of the all of your other pricing schemes now the last one if you go up to ecom fastlane dot com slash overlow this will bring you to overlow which is essential for getting aliexpress products 